until about um, 130 years ago, I suppose, or even 120, all musical experiences were live experiences. There was no such thing as recording. So if you heard music, it was because you'd gone somewhere where somebody was playing it. Mm. And when you left, that was the end of the music. You left the music behind as well, except in your memory. Um, I remember reading a biography of some Victorian person once, and the person said, um, the writer said that this person was extremely thrilled that in his lifetime he'd heard Beethoven's Fifth Symphony seven times. And that was quite an achievement then to hear the same piece of music a number of times. Um, and I thought that was really amazing because we're so used to the idea of hearing a piece of music if we want to hundreds or even thousands of times. So when, when recording came along, you had two very distinct things for a little while. You had a live performance, which was unique. And then you had recordings, which you could listen to thousands of times and they never changed, except they got more scratches on them as you, as you played them. Um, what, what I started realizing in the 60s when I started playing with tape recorders as an active machine, as a way of creating music, I started to realize that there was the possibility of a third area in between fully live and fully recorded, um, which I could make using tape. For instance, a very good example of that is um, Steve Reich's It's Gonna Rain, those early tape pieces of his, where he takes a little fragment of recorded sound and runs a loop of it against another machine playing the same loop at a slightly different speed and it generates a new piece. So this is something different. It's in a way a live performance. It's live in the sense that it, it has never happened before, that particular thing that you're hearing then. Um, but it's recorded in the sense that nobody is playing anything. So I was sort of interested in this new area of music that had been opened up. And because I, I don't play any instruments myself with any skill whatsoever. So I was interested also in the way of making music that could be made with the instruments that I understood, which were tape recorders. I, at one point when I was a student, I had 31 tape recorders. I used to find old broken ones and mend them and make them do funny things. Um, so this generative music is really something new in the sense that it isn't live in the sense of people sitting playing something, but it isn't recorded either in the sense of something forever fixed. It's some new hybrid between the two. Um, and I, I really think that it's possible in 30 or 40 years, people will look back on the era of recording, the era that we're sort of still in, but just moving out of now, but the last 120 years, and they'll say, Granddad, did you really just listen to the same thing over and over and over again? The same thing, exactly the same thing. How weird. I, I think that's quite possible that it will be seen as a historical anomaly something strange that we we used to do rather like um i don't know do you know those those light machines called zoetropes before film existed people had found ways of making some images move and they look kind of quaint and rather silly to us now but people used to watch them <laughs> people used to sit and watch the same horse going round and 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 think, that's amazing, look, look, it moves. <laughs> so maybe we'll think about all, I'll, all of my work will look suddenly like those horses going round. <laughs>